Hey everyone, it's Jana Verbeke Leach, Realtor in London, Ontario. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and check out some of the other videos I have posted on my social media and YouTube for more tips uh, about buying and selling in this ever-changing real estate marketplace. A lot of people for a long time have wanted to escape city life and find a piece of property in the country. And with COVID-19, I feel like that's happening a little bit more frequently. Just that sense of being away from people, having your own space, also having some land for your kids to run around and play, or maybe you have a nice big garden vegetable plot. Um, and also, you know, chickens and horses and things like that, and just really getting back to a bit of a simpler way of life. And so I wanted to give you sort of my top three things to watch out for if you're looking at living in the country, uh, especially if you've come from living in the city. The first is that you need to understand there's a very, very high likelihood that you will have a septic tank instead of municipal sewers, that your water will be coming from a well, not municipally provided water, uh, and that you may or may not have access to natural gas for your property. So all of those three things considered really just mean that your heating, cooling, and plumbing systems are going to be very different than what you're used to in the city. And you want to make sure that you're working with someone who can explain the importance of those changes and what to look out for and how you're going to need to make an offer um, look a little differently when it comes to getting some uh, clauses and protection around those items. So take a look at, at those things. The second thing that I would caution you to be aware of is the zoning of the property. If you are specifically looking at country property because you want to have, you know, 10 chickens or a horse um, or a couple of goats or something like that, just because the property is in the country, it doesn't doesn't mean that the zoning is compliant with a light agricultural use like having horses and chickens and things like that. So you want to make sure that the zoning is compliant with what you want to do with that property. The last thing that I'll caution you about, because it's um, typically the way that more residential properties become available in the country, is that usually those properties, if they haven't been sold in the past, um, are being severed from larger pieces of agricultural land. So it, for example, there's a house and there's a nice piece of property, but it's surrounded by farmer's fields, maybe 10 acres, maybe 50 acres. And that house is for sale pending severance, meaning that a small piece of that land, maybe one acre or or two acres or three acres are being sort of carved out from that greater agricultural plot. So the caution with that is make sure you understand what the use of the surrounding land is if there are any other plans to, t to turn that property, for example, into other building lots. Uh, because if you're buying that country lifestyle, I think you'd agree you'd be pretty upset to find out that you're going to have five or six houses essentially right next door to yours. So those would be my top three things to look out for. Rural properties in themselves carry a, a bunch of different questions that I think are important to ask. Those are the top three. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. I'm here to help. Thanks for watching.